four of us here, all my buddies, Mark, Kevin, Trevor, and myself. So Kevin's claim to fame is 14 minute 10K. Trevor is the crit master, 1500 watt sprint. Mark can run, ride 300K, no problem. All right, so we're going, there's a lake right here, Lake Simcoe. And it's about 200 kilometers around the lake. And we're gonna see if we can do it at 40 kilometers an hour today. Think yeah. we can do it or what? We got it. Yeah. So our goal is, to, or like what our plan is to do five minute pulls. So that's like three pulls an hour each. And uh, we should be back here in five hours. These are all our smiley faces right now. Yeah. Chat, we'll see you in five hours. station so three and a half hours average speed 39.1 average watts 240 we got 47k left you think we could average 40k that's only like an hour man think we can handle it huh so about an hour 15 hour 20 left let's crush it faces now it's all done total ride time five and a half two hours i got 207 average speed 38 let's look at the laps so it took us five four hours 39 minutes average power 244 normalized 280 so how far was it i need three days to recover 185 i think no, 187. I got 194 from home. Yeah, I have 196 and it's 90. All right, so the loop we ended up doing, we averaged 39 kilometers an hour, but it was only for 185K, right? Yeah. That's enough though, that hurt. Like- The wind was fucking- Yeah, the wind, the wind fucked us. Like we didn't get as good of a tailwind as we got a headwind. Yeah, that, that road was just... Yeah. Fuck. Oh, because there's, like, no draft. You're getting... Yeah. You're still doing, like... Fucking harpoon. All right, guys. I got to ride 40 minutes now to get home. Oh, you're fucked. You're fucked. I was going to ask one of you guys for a ride, but... A ride? I don't want to be a bitch. Oh, my God. No, I thought maybe one of you had your cars here. So. Oh. I mean, I can if you come to my house. No, no, it's okay. I'd be better off just calling Deirdre and starting to ride towards her. 
by the time, if I'm like Deirdre, I'm gonna start riding towards you, get in the car and meet me halfway, bro, I'd get home before she fucking left. All right, guys, fucking mission accomplished. One kilometer an hour short of our goal, but I'll still take that as a happy day. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Time to get home. When, uh... Subscribe. I'm trying to make my way home. I got another 13 kilometers and I am wrecked. Just wrecked. It's a couple days later. I was gonna end the video there, but I thought you guys may have a couple questions and just give you a little bit more info about the ride and maybe some tips if you guys are interested in doing a ride like that. So number one, nutrition, super important. I basically stuff my pockets with as much food as I can. I usually run my fig bars from Costco, but I ran out. So I made peanut butter sandwiches with tons of honey and just cut them in half, put them in plastic bags and ate about one of those every 45 minutes. I'm going for about 45 to 50 grams of carbs per hour and then I'm good. So nutrition, super important. I brought three bottles with me. I used the Garmin instead of the K2 and that's because of the battery power. I do like the maps on the K2 better. I wish I had them during that ride. I really like uh, interacting with those maps better than the Garmin map. And just the device itself, how smooth it is. More on hydration. And then there's two more important points that I wanna talk about as well. Those are pacing and mindset. So first with the hydration, I, will, I took three bottles with me, but I go for one bottle an hour minimum. If it's really hot, I could go up to two bottles an hour. Why it's so important is, let's say, you know, if it's a four hour ride, I could probably get away with two, two bottles if it's not that hot out. The problem is you wanna stay away from dehydration. And like I said, you could probably get through that ride, but the next ride could suffer if you're dehydrated. And when you're dehydrated, it's, it takes you a while to get that hydration back. It's not like, oh, you just drink a bunch of water and you're hydrated again. You're gonna suffer the, the, the effects of dehydration. So that's why nutrition and hydration are so important. It's not only to fuel the current ride, but to fuel the future rides and recovery. So now let's talk about pacing. Now let's say you've never done a big ride before. And let's say you're doing 200K you got a 200 kilometer ride plan, but you only done 120K. One, the first thing to look at is time, because let's say you're doing a 200 kilometer ride on gravel, how long is it gonna take you? You know how we aim for 40 kilometers an hour? Okay, well, we do the math, that's five hour ride. But let's say it was a gravel ride. That could take like six, seven hours, right? So it's very important to figure out how long you're gonna be out there and then work backwards from there. You need to know how long you're gonna be out there for your fueling, for your pacing. So when it comes to pacing, it's very simple. You just don't want to go too hard at the beginning. You're better off to leave a little bit on the table at the beginning to have nothing at the end. You also want to look at who you're riding with. If you look at the group that you're with and you know that you're not the strongest guy there, make sure you're not doing more than anyone that's stronger than you because you know you'll pro you're probably making a mistake and oh boy i have done that in the past so go out leave some on the table at the beginning look at the group look at the dynamics of the group and and just figure out where you are in that group and just make sure you're not doing more than someone that's fitter than you but also take into consideration what type of ride it is because if it's a steady pace 200 watts 220 watts that's a lot different than what we were doing where we're pulling on the front i'm doing pulls on the front 350 400 than sitting in the draft at 200. so it's really important to take all those considerations into a ride really have the metrics and know what you're getting yourself into and then you can pace it accordingly now let's talk about mindset and i think this is the most important part of doing a long ride is not allowing yourself to get into negative thinking. And how I do that is just by, it, it, this is gonna sound so stupid, but like, say I get my bar out of my pocket and it just comes right out and I don't, I'm not like messing around because I got my gloves on or there's other stuff in my pocket. I'm like, oh, I got that bar, easy, nice, little win. Or, you know, I see some trees that I like or something. I go, oh, those trees look really good. Oh, I'm in the draft, perfect. You know, you know what I mean, stuff like that. And I start doing little things like that to keep my mind positive. Because if you go the other way and you start thinking negative, oh boy, I have brought myself 
yourself into some bad places. And it's just not a good place to be because you're, you're only gonna feel worse physically as the ride goes on. And if you get into that mental headspace where you are just negative, it's only gonna get worse and you're not gonna perform as well. The mind is so connected to the body and when you're positive and you're like, yeah, I can do this, you are gonna perform better. And the same is true is if you're negative, you're like, oh, I suck. Everyone here is faster than me. They're taking these pulls. I can't do them. They're stronger than me. And guys, I've been there. You can't let yourself get into that mindset. And I mean, I remember doing this ride with this group and they were all stronger than me. And I'm like looking at the trees. I'm like, that's an ugly tree. This is stupid. Oh, the, I suck. And then once, once you start getting down on yourself and you're like, oh, I suck. These guys are so much better than me. It's game over. So it's very important to, to keep that positivity flowing right to the finish line. And I think that is probably out of all the tips. I mean, nutrition, hydration, and pacing, super important. All these tips are equally as important, but the mindset is right up there. It's so important. I'm gonna finish my ride. Let's get home. I actually have some bad news, something that uh, irritated me a little bit, but it's all good. It's all good, not complaining. I got the new Durace coming on an Amanda. My local bike shop said it was supposed to ship September 16th, but that's been pushed back to October 1st. So hopefully it doesn't get pushed back again, but I can't wait for that bike to come. I'm gonna do a bunch of videos comparing it to the Madone. Uh, we're gonna do some flat segments, some uphill segments, same water, see what the difference in bikes are in terms of speed. Can't wait for that. I'm going to be announcing the giveaway winners on the next video. I'm going to be announcing a new giveaway. So please hit that subscribe button to make sure you're notified. And if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button. It helps me out tremendously. And I just wanted to say thank you. Love you. You're what keep this channel going. It means the world to me. Please like it if you like it. Hit the thumbs down if you didn't like it. I get that too. Comment. Love to hear from you guys. I'll see you on the next video. I'll see you soon. Bye.